so recently I have become a home educator which means I have officially deregistered my children and am officially homeschooling um, and I thought I'd make this video because I have had pretty much zero support in this decision from my friends and family um, and while this is not a video to prove my points to anybody because I don't need to prove myself uh, and my decision to anybody the point of this video hopefully is to inspire anybody else who's been thinking about home educating or homeschooling for a little while or wants to do it right now as a reaction to what is going on inside schools and the school systems hopefully this video will inspire you to um, make that decision if you truly feel that this could be right for you and your family and your children so I have no structure <laughs> written out for this video so sorry if it's a bit rambly but I just want to talk through some of the pros slash um, debunking the issues that most people tell themselves or the things that most people tell themselves about homeschooling as reasons why they can't do it so number one my child will have no social life well if your child has friends at school now then there's no reason why they can't continue to see those friends outside of school, outside of, you know, whenever. I mean, at school at the moment, most of the country are saying that children must wear face masks everywhere in school all the time, except from when in the classroom. So that means when you're in the classroom, you're in lecture, you're in lesson, you're not going to be chatting to your mate. And everywhere else, you've got a muzzle strapped onto you anyway. So pretty much outside of school hours and school time is the only time that um, normal children are going to be able to socialise with their school friends anyway. Um, but I don't know any home educating parent um, that doesn't have a child with a really active, thriving social life. So this comes into play in the form of, of clubs and um, sports and extracurricular activities and just generally going through life you know, if you're with your kids all the time, they're going to have to run more errands with you. They're going to be exposed to more people from more different walks of life. Um, so, in a way, they're more socially advanced because they're going to have groups of people they know. And also, they're going to choose their friends because they want to choose them as their friends rather than just choosing their friends from circumstance. Because I was grouped into this group of, of children, so I have to find someone in this class or in this year group to be my friend because... I don't have access to any other children from anywhere else. So if I don't get on, you know, if you're the child with anyone, then you're a bit bit sodded really, aren't you? But when you're an adult, you don't have one set of friends. You have, some of us have friends from school still, from college, from uni. Where's my phone? Hang on. So yeah, as an adult, you have friends from work, friends from school, friends from ex-jobs, friends from anything you're part of. If, if you do sports or you're part of a society or something, part of a charity, part of an organisation, you have friends from all sorts of places and then you have more of a varied um, group of friends from different different backgrounds. So when you're at school, you generally only hang around with the people at your school. So you're actually more social as a home educated child and there's actually more time to socialise because when you home educate it doesn't mean that you have to be doing six to eight hours of straight lessons at home think about how much time is wasted in the school day through routines through things that you don't need to do the point of the school system is that it keeps your child there for long enough for you to go to work so it's free childcare. that's really the point of it if it's just one-on-one -on -one, you will be surprised about how much time it takes you to teach a child something you're not teaching 30 children so for them to understand something it takes a substantially less amount of time so you have more hours in the day so kids have more time to socialize with children they want to socialize with outside of just circumstance it's generally hard for everyone in the world at the moment i mean i sent my eldest to beavers for the first time last week or the week before but they had to sit in hula hoops the whole time to be socially distanced. I mean, this is one of the reasons I have taken my children out of school. So 
you cannot be social and distance at the same time. So at this moment in time in this country, socialisation shouldn't really be on your reasons to not homeschool because it's hard for everyone at the moment. So these are just things that I've written down. Um, I'll probably repeat things and whatnot, so sorry for that. But some other homeschooling pros to think about. You get to spend more time with the family. If you have a partner that works a normal nine to five, they probably don't get to see your children uh, very much. Your kids come home and then they have to do homework or then they have their after school stuff. And usually if you have a one parent working family, you know, if it's traditional like that, that parent doesn't get to see the kids much. This way they get to see them whenever. I mean, that's not my situation, but for most people, that's a big pro. Um, children are actually, home educated children are more independent and I can elaborate that on that a bit more later. Um, you get to give your children a richer curriculum. So you get to go off on all the tangents and actually like feed their minds. You couldn't do that in a classroom, even if, I mean, children have the ability to raise their hand and ask the teacher, well, what about this? And they'll say, well, we haven't really got time to answer that because they have to get through the curriculum that they have to teach. Even, I mean, disclaimer, I'm not anti-school and I don't judge people um, that aren't homeschoolers. I don't feel like homeschooling is best for everybody. I feel like it's best for certain people. Um, and I respect teachers, um, but I also know a lot of teachers ha struggle with certain ways in which the school system forces them to work and educate their pupils. Um, so yeah, you get to go off on those tangents. There's time in home education. You're not to a schedule. Um, you can, you know, you can foster their thirst for knowledge and learning and their and build a natural curiosity. Um, also, homeschool is illegal in some countries. I didn't know that. That kind of blows my mind. Um, and they're not weird, random, small countries that you've never heard of before. I think Germany is one and Sweden is one. Well, they do have better school systems, but still, it's actually a blessing that you're allowed to homeschool your children by choice at the moment, as it stands. So get in while you can. Um, the school system is a curriculum. One for everyone says every child is different. Well, the school system is a curriculum. One size fits all, but it, it really doesn't fit all. It really doesn't fit all children. So, especially if your child is diagnosed with a learning disorder, such as you know dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia. Um, they kind of get boxed and labelled, so don't don't try and teach this child. They must go to this special ed class and be taught amongst these people. And you know those labels in the school system can really harm. Or you know if it goes undiagnosed, then their class as unintelligent. And, you know um, it lowers their confidence. I mean this is what's happened to my son. He when I'm undiagnosed with dyspraxia for since the whole time he's been in the school system until now. And where the curriculum got to a point where he couldn't do it, I mean, he would cry, he developed a tick where he'd, he'd scratch his face and say, I'm, I'm not clever enough, I can't do it. But nobody sat down and really looked at the way that he learns and why is he not getting it? And every parent's evening I was just told, He's doing fine. He's doing great. He's doing well. Did you have a good time at school today? Yep. So, you know, home educating, you get to know your child a lot better. Um, and it's kind of crazy to me now to think about it. Like, how did this all go on? And he had this whole other life that I knew nothing about. Uh, and I just let that happen because you're just too wrapped up in, you know, Society says you need to do this and do this and do this. So anyway, off track tangent there. Um, yeah, children with learning disabilities can be taught one to one by you or by a tutor, by whatever. But they're gonna get a more tailored support at home during in home education than they would in school. Because in school, even if you have 
uh, a teacher and assistant sit with your child that has learning disabilities, they still have to learn it in that way that they're teaching the 30, 26, 35 other pupils in the class. So really it's besides the point because they need to be taught in a different way with different strategies. So teaching support, whatever, it's, not, it's a bit contradictory really, isn't it, when you think about it. So now with my oldest who has dyspraxia, now I know what it is. You know, he learns best through experiencing and, and imagining himself in scenarios. So as a home educator, I can go and teach geology on the beach amongst the rocks. We can learn about castles whilst inside a castle, you know, literally putting yourself in those places. A lot of these things are free as well. So, you know, you do not have to be rich to home educate. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But those that feel they're not good enough to home educate their children or I couldn't offer my child the best education, um, you know, that teachers could. It's probably not true. Think about it, how much of that is true. Think about what kind of education you want your child to have and think about what are you good at or not good at. And if you have learning disabilities where you have a severe dyslexia so you couldn't teach your children reading and writing, then it's not hard to outsource that. You know, if you're lucky enough to have friends and family and grandparents that can help with that or, or a partner that can help with that, or there's plenty of apps, there's plenty of online schools, there's plenty of online courses. You know, if your child's already got basic knowledge, it's not going to be that hard. And think about what else you can offer them other than academics. Think about all the life skills you have. If you're self-employed, if you run your own business, you can teach your children about that. You can teach them about finances. You can teach them about cooking, you can teach them about baking, you can teach them about life skills, whatever your job is. Is it a, you know, a physical skill? Teach them that. When you really start to sit down and think about what skills you need in life, your children are going to need those skills too. So how is that not part of, of you know, education? Same with um, time in schools. Time in schools, as I said. So you have to run with the class. Um, if you don't get something, you only have X amount of weeks in the term to get it. And even if you cycle back around to that next term or next year and you go back over that subject, if you didn't, as a child, if you didn't catch the, the core concept, it's not concrete in you, how can you then go on to the advanced version of it? Um, but there is no time. You know, if you're home educating and your child doesn't understand something, you take your time with it until it's concrete. So there's no gaps in the knowledge no gaps in the learning from year to year to year which you will find in schools because all children are different all children learn different things at different rates so that's no longer an issue so even if it takes you if you are already homeschooling and you're thinking oh you know i'm still doing key stage one and they should be at key stage two if they're within proper school then know that the children in key stage two not all of them will retain everything they're being taught, but your child being taught by you at home until they get it properly will probably retain all of that information forever or a much longer time period um, than those in the school. So children might be ahead of your child, but your child's going to get it down, down proper, basically. You mean you could be outside in all weathers when you're in the school year, you know, you get those six week holidays usually pisses down with rain. <laughs> uh, and then September's really sunny, but you're back stuck in the classroom. You can teach outside. If you have a garden, if you have a park, you don't have to do lessons inside the classroom. You can learn. And if you want to do formal lessons with books and writing, you can still take that outside. Or you can go and do nature walks and learning and all sorts. But you can be outside in ev any weather you want. You can be inside in the winter, so when your children are at school and you're worried about them catching a cold in the playground or it's winter flu, cold season, and you're worried about all the germs that children bring home and they interact and everyone gets ill and everyone gets head lice, you haven't got to worry about that. Much healthier children probably at home. You, you can keep a, you know, tabbed on their diet as well, health, all that sort of thing. Homeschooled educated children statistically go to the doctor a lot less for some reason. I'm assuming it's those types of things they're just healthier so they can also get to pursue their passions as well and interests that they want to learn about so 
the other thing about time is not always about being able to keep up with the class. It's also if you're ahead of the class. If you're ahead of the class, there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to waste your time waiting for the rest of your class to catch up because the curriculum says we're not moving on to the next level till next year or next term or whatever. If your child is advanced in a subject, then they can just skip ahead. Same with life. Like, if your child at nine years old is interested in computers and computer programming, why can't they start to learn it from then? Why can't they go on a coding course when they're 12? Why do you have to wait until you're 16 years old to then start to learn about a specific subject in college or an apprenticeship that you know you want to have a career in? You have to wait until you complete the whole school system. I mean, you can say, oh, they could do that outside of school, but where's the time, realistically? Where is the time? So, you don't have to wait in this weird system. If that was if that was the case, and your child started computer programming, engineering at age, age 9, 12, whatever, by the time they applied for college or uni, they'd probably already be adva too advanced for the college course, you know? This is the kind of things that we don't take advantage of. Um, so for people that kind of are going to say, you know, that they should learn, you know, to do things they don't want to do, children still have to do things they don't want to do at home because mum says, because dad said, because they have to do work, because we say you have to, you have to learn certain things. Um, so they still have to learn to do things they don't want to do. I don't think that they want to brush their teeth half the time, but they learn how to do it. And people say, oh, you know, it builds character if they're bullied or whatever. Why, why do children only have to learn character building through trauma and grief? Why should suffering be the only way that children learn how to conduct themselves in negative social situations? Why? Why can't we just teach them mindfulness at home so they're prepared for it when it happens? Why can't we teach them through narrative stories of other people, through historical examples, through our own experiences, through your neighbours' experiences, through your family's experiences? Why can't we allow them to develop a better sense of themselves and self-understanding so that when they're put into those social situations, they're so sure of themselves and confident that it doesn't really affect them? Why do they have to go through the process of, of being bullied? Why? For some reason, people have this assumption that if you home educate your children, they're in this weird sheltered bubble. When actually, you're more in a sheltered bubble if you're in the school most of the year, most days of the week, most weeks of the year. You get up and you go to the same building and you're inside this little school prison, if you will. Um, that's sheltering. You don't know anything else about the world other than what you're being taught by your teachers. When you're home educated, you're a lot more around the world, around the way, around in out in in life itself a lot more. So I don't understand how you can say that's being sheltered. And then most home educators are really decent people and they will want their children to be exposed like I do to different schools of thought and different situations and make up their minds for themselves. Um, and the only kind of way you really get that at school is through kind of peer pressure like we all think this is cool so if you don't then you're wrong it's not necessarily the best to have home educators that are ex-teachers because then you kind of have to unteach yourself to teach as a teacher because Homeschooling is not school at home. It's completely different. And that's another reason if you are thinking, I didn't cope this year in lockdown when they sent home all the schoolwork and I couldn't get my children to sit down and do it, so I'll never be able to do it. That's because you were trying to recreate school at home. Homeschooling is not that. It's completely different. But anyway, not teachers do not make the best home educators. You do not have to be formally educated as a teacher or a tutor to be able to give your child a good home education. Lots of families have very strong spiritual religious morals or just strong morals in general. 
and you can say them to your children but when they go into these places they will get compromised um, and that's not to say that that won't happen in life anyway but when you're home educated you get a longer amount of time to instill those morals in your children before they go out and that happens and people start to challenge them. I mean, always inc I always encourage my children to make up their own minds about things and that's something that doesn't happen in the school system. That is not encouraged when you think about it. That's not encouraged in the school system at all. They tell you what the right, what the right answers are. <clears throat> they tell you what your goals should be. You t they tell you, they set your goals and have to when you're in that school system, children become reliant on being told what to do and they become reliant on being guided by someone else other than themselves. So they they know when to go to school, when to wake up, it's dictated by that, you know, uh, when or they start asking, is it okay to do this now? Because they're used to being told all the time. Home educated students do not have that um remorse or you know they don't they don't see learning whether you try to do this intentionally or not home educated children never stop learning they just learn that inquisitive nature of learning all the time 24 7 they don't think school is school home is home if you're in the school system it's very likely to see it as work you know, I've been at school all day, I just want to sit on my console or I just want to go out with my friends because I've been at school all day and that was boring, that was shit, I didn't want to do it and now I'm going to do something else that's completely disassociated with learning because I've done too much of that and I don't like doing it, blah, 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 blah. Home educated children are more self-motivated, they have to self-organise a little bit more um, and they put their own targets upon themselves. There's a difference between self-motivation and the programming and the conditioning that you get at secular state school that is that you have to stress, that you have to struggle, that you have to get up and you have to go to a place and you have to clock in and sign in and you have to do what everybody else is doing because you have to because you should and you just become this little robot that's just geared and groomed for the workplace uh, for, to work for someone else. So homeschooling and home education allows children to self-discover, to discover what they want to do, to set their own goals instead of their own goals to be get my GCSEs and then do A-levels and then get a house, get a family, get a career, get a mortgage, whatever, you know. Let children grow and be authentic whilst, whilst you're at home it's usually a safe place children can be themselves they feel like they can be themselves how many times have you heard you know oh they're a different child at school well, because they bloody are a different child at school because they're trying to conform to what they're supposed to be you've got that mask on all the time you know if you let them be themselves more then they're going to grow into themselves more confidently more authentically you know just naturally you know let that child if your child's particularly funny and humorous let them enjoy that, encourage that, let them own that rather than being told oh, you're such a class clown and you don't apply yourself and your humour is not appreciated. And then they're going to they're gonna shrink, you know, those types of things let your child shrink, you know, it's not nice. And let's talk about, you know, the whole being. When, when you have that self-pressure to conform or to be under someone else's control, is not the only way to make money why does the world and life and making a living have to be hard why does you know something why does a really good future have to be really really out of reach really unattainable and really hard to get why why are we teaching that to children in schools uh, you know this is what school is programming children to believe um and that academic excellence is the only you know it builds up self-worth based on your academic excellence in, in a school environment and everything else is shunned or the occasional sports sports place um, depends on the school you know how much the school values sports or arts or whatever but it's always a specialist subject and if you can't do that and that's what the school's about and that's what the school promotes then you're, you're rubbish basically aren't you so just think about just imagine growing up 
and being allowed to just grow up without being pulled to pillar and post and, and told this now and now you have to learn this, this, this and this. Just imagine complete and utter freedom and allowing children's imagination for longer than nursery age or reception age and then it has to be phonics and this and this and this. Just imagine, you know, like when children make little villages or a setting out of whatever, whether it's Lego, whether it's bits of crap in the garden. Personally, me and me and my cousin used to make fun fairs out of bits of crap that we found. <laughs> um, like bottle lids, we'd find a bottle cap and we'd arrange these things with twigs and we'd say, this is the, this is the roundabout and this is the, anyway, that, that's not toys that need to be put away and, and making a mess. That is children creating alternate realities and when you allow them to do that for a long amount of time the imagination is building up a really good muscle for designing and fixing you know make creating tangible solutions to issues and problems when we let that imagination muscle go and tell me how much imagination can you have in school it's when we're told we can be imaginative now we're doing creative writing now so now you can be imaginative we're doing you know art now so now you can make a pattern however you want to make a pattern but you're still told now be creative now turn it off now we're doing this so it's really not the same and this is part of the reason why people are depressed now because what you'll find is that school teaches us what to do how to eat how to dress when to wake up when to go to sleep where to spend your time, where to spend your thoughts, what to be thinking about all the time. And a lot of the time, your mind, body and spirit will protest that. And you get that little inner voice, especially when you're little, that's where you get tantrums and not wanting to go to school because the child's inner being is saying, I don't want to do that. I just want to, I just want to play. Um, you know, there is a lot of learn through play. And what happens is when we're forced into that, year after year after year, that little voice that protests that says, this is not what I want to be doing right now, so why am I doing it? That little voice gets quieter and quieter and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And then when we've got everything we're told we we want or programmed to believe that we want, this is why you see so many people with their online businesses saying, I was in corporate and I made loads of money and I was so unhappy. I'm a, I'm a millionaire. I never felt more low in my life because mind, body, spirit, spirit, hand, heart and um, head are not in the right place. So why waste your life, you know, conforming to that and then you find out that's not what I want anyway. Why not allow children to do that from such a young age? And there is so much discipline in home educated children. They are, they understand time management more. Because they have to, they, they have first hand experience of what gets done when they're left to their own devices, and you know, and they're fueled by passion, not discipline that's you know enforced upon them. They want to learn when they've been home educated. This is another thing that puts people off. They think that you can't get GCSEs, you won't be able to get into college, further education, or jobs. It's actually bullshit. And you can do GCSEs when you're not in school, you can pay to do them privately, you can get them done in a school or a centre. Um, but you obviously will have to teach your child key stage four curriculum to be able to pass those exams. But lots of colleges and lots of universities actually seek out home educated children because they know the amount of passion that they're going to bring um, and the amount of knowledge that they've probably already got from studying this subject outside of, you know, the school. Um, and they're, they're there because they want to be there. They're self motivated. Home education, home educated pupils breeds um passion fueled discipline rather than heavy handed enforced programmed discipline so we need we're going to need in the state of the world we're going to need humans that grow up with sound minds and you know this way of home educating children there are so many factors you know they're not bullying they're learning you know to grow into yourself to listen to that inner voice all these things knowing what you want 
allowing to develop at your own rate all these things help you to grow up with a sound mind which so many of us don't have at the moment practical skills that most of us are not allowed to learn until the end of school um, end of year what is it 11 um and imagination and compassion and humor all of those things are kind of children have them but school system makes it hard for those qualities to thrive and to last in individuals um, and they, they're just suppressed basically child's never categorized negatively with labels so if you had a kid that has adhd and you're a home educator they're no longer a disruption to the class you can let them stand up and write if they need to you can let them run around for five minutes between work at home if, if they need you have freedom of movement you have more control over your life uh, when you're a home educator so you don't have to take vacations and holidays in term times only at weekends only you don't have to plan field trips and and holidays and just generally anything you want to do appointments you know oh, i can't get an appointment because of school or this or this everything's just more relaxed more chill and how is that not a positive in today's really fast paced everything really fast paced society um so just ask yourself why do you think school is king why do you think the school system secular state schools why do you think they're king why do you think they're so amazing why is school so brilliant why is it better than any other way of educating your child that belief itself has probably come from the system itself that you were part of that you've been in people that don't believe in homeschooling or don't believe it should be legal why are you so concerned that it needs to be monitored you know do you not believe that every parent should have the right to educate their child themselves if they so wish to it's like you must hand over your child to be programmed in this way for this society that you're part of or else basically if you don't conform to this way of thinking and this way of living then you're kind of exiled really and why is that okay i mean it's not okay but lots of people feel like this and i'm asking why why do you feel like this why do you feel more comfortable and secure by having somebody else a teacher that's you know in normal schools they have a different teacher every year so that teacher has not had an extensive amount of time with your child but you trust them to tell you all about your child um surely you know your child best when you're a home educator you get to know them on a much deeper level your children you know their thought patterns their learning styles their passions their interests their, their, all of it you know but you rely and you feel more comfortable and more confident that a stranger that's known your your child for less than a year can do that much better than you why why do you feel like that where does that belief come from it's bullshit to be honest that our children should we not be taking more responsibility and i mean i'm not saying that everyone needs to do this but for anyone who feels called to this why would you let some stranger i mean i know they're qualified but how qualified are they to know your child on that level to be able to say that they're failing or they're doing great and then you know you don't even know why unless that child tells you which they probably won't do because you probably don't have that deep of a connection with them because you just drop them off at school and expect someone else to do half of the raising of your child you know and that's a great setup that keeps you know it's designed so you can go to work and work for a system you know you can't there are other ways to make money as i said why is everybody else that doesn't choose this way weird or wrong or scum why why should everybody have to have the same curriculum why does every individual why does every child have to be taught the exact same things obviously fundamentals basics of maths and english and language arts and writing is important obviously but why can't we have why can't we why can't we raise individuals you know that have studied different things that have interests in different things that have 
skill knowledge bases in certain areas we will need that in the future if we're all just taught the same things then we're all not going to be very interesting are we so in the uk to deregister your child you only have to contact your local council and tell them you want to deregister i deregistered with the school and the council but actually by law you don't even have to give the school notice but obviously it's common courtesy um, so I did that and my school was really shitty with me but there's actually nothing they can do and you don't have to have anyone breathing down your neck um, about you know so if that's one of the things that's holding you back and you're worried that you're not going to be able to teach to the standards that are put upon you 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 literally create your own standards so you don't have to worry about that you know I'm due home visits um, from the council to support me in home learning you can refuse that you don't have to have it um, I just I just want everything that I can you know I'm still really new to this so but there are curriculums that are done for you you can buy them there's lots of American ones there's lots of Christian American ones um, you can do unit studies which is the route that I've decided to take there's different schools there's different philosophies different um, school systems that you can research I mean for myself I'm really tr really trying to follow um, the Waldorf way so like a Steiner school um, you know I only know about um, Rudolf Steiner because of my work with crystals um, and it's before you start it's not some weird woohoo way it's um you just have to research it for yourself if i had the money i'd probably send my children to a waldorf school but i don't so we'll just do it our way and even then it's more tailored to the individual still but you know don't let the overwhelm of where do i start put you off either you obviously those home curriculums that you can buy, they're quite expensive. Obviously, there's buy and sell, obviously, there's second hand. Um, <clears throat> but lots of people find they buy a curriculum, it sounds great, they do it, it doesn't work for them. You know, so don't, is my advice, to, to buy um, one first time without seeing it or without downloading sample packs. Um, I was very interested in the Oak Meadow, which is a Waldorf inspired curriculum. But it was like over $300 for the basic curriculum. And whilst that is great for convenience, where I never have to make lesson plans um, and think ahead because it's just all there for you, tells you what to do, tells you the material, what you need, what you need. It's just convenience. And I decided I could be spending that $300 more on experiences, on books for the children, on days out for the children, etc, etc. Um, so just research there's so many different ways so, some people like to follow the national curriculum still personally what I've done is just make sure that what is on the national curriculum gets followed but not in the order and the terms that it would be done at school so I'm just making sure that we eventually learn all of these things but as they fit into what we've planned um, but it is good to follow that national curriculum if you're trying it out and you're not sure if you're going to stay homeschooling and then you know that you can go back into the school system at any time should you need to and your child is um, up to date with the curriculum etc so it's really easy you write an email you deregister you choose what you want to do you design what you want to do and you do it you do not have to, you do not have to have anyone breathing down your neck you do not have to sign off to anyone so why not homeschool and home educate your children if you want to as i said this is not a video to try and convince everybody in the world to do it it's just if you've been thinking about it what is holding you back um, for a lot of people um, obviously it means that you might if you're a two-parent household you might have to turn into a one income one income family but there are lots of things you can do online to make money uh, if you're going to be the one that's at home educating your children uh, and you previously worked in a job part-time you might be able to keep that or if you worked full-time you might be able to take that business online 
there's just lots and lots of creative ways where it doesn't have to equal financial hardship and you don't have to be rich to home educate i've seen um uh, mums women's uh, youtube channels that in the uk that are on universal credit and they're still homeschooling you know they're saying they're saving money on uniforms they're saving money on really expensive school trips um and lunches and dinners and equipment and things like that you can you know learn about the life of the world um for free most of the time if you're just creative enough about it there's loads of free printables and worksheets on so many different websites you just have to google well, this is websites there's ones that you can pay 20 pounds a year for there's loads of apps that are free some are quite really affordable so the apps and the, and the workbooks and the online courses or the online tutoring or the in-person tutoring or shared group tutoring where you have a tutor that teaches a group of kids and, and you all chip in on the price. If you still have to have work commitments, it doesn't mean that it can't work. It might be hard to juggle and find your feet at first, but if you really believe that it's the best decision for you and your children, then I'm sure you will find a way to work it out. And the other really positive, other than being able to spend more time with your family, is if you have more than one child, you really, really see, I mean, lots of people probably have seen this, maybe, maybe not, maybe it wasn't long enough, but siblings become closer. You kind of just get over it. There's less, less fighting. There's a much stronger sibling bond the more time that they're together. So yeah, that's my little rant. And I think if you're thinking about homeschooling and you want to, please give it a try. The worst that can happen is you have a shit time with it and then they go back to school. You don't have to do register forever. Um, and yeah, if you want to know any more about, you know, what I'm doing in my homeschooling, like any more reasons why I chose to homeschool or you know anything else just just drop me a message because i think it's one of the most courageous responsible and amazing choices we can make in the world right now is to be home educating our children if you have the passion to do so um just because the difference is going to make in the world basically and basically my advice to anyone who's just started homeschool or has spoken to their friends and family about uh, their decision to homeschool or their desire to homeschool and you get met with negativity and sarky comments and sour looks and faces as I have done or you know, side glances, eye rolling I don't know any polite way <laughs> to say this but my advice to you would be just to tell them to find a phallus and perform fellatio on it basically and you you do you 